In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about series RLC circuits at resonant frequency, or when we go above or below resonant frequency, what the effect on the circuit is. First of all, let's discuss what is resonant frequency. We're going to use the definition that XL equals XC. So the reactants at whatever frequency where the ohms on the inductor equal the ohms on the capacitor. Because they're pointing in opposite directions, they're going to cancel out, right? Two vectors that oppose each other will cancel out. They'll dance their little game in the circuit and do their thing, but just act between each other. And the resistance is all that the circuit source will see. So in this case, my R actually equals my Z, my impedance. It's kind of a minimum impedance. When the frequency is such that these two ohmic values match, they cancel out, leaving the circuit source, looking at the circuit and thinking it's purely resistive. Remember back at the beginning where I had that motor? and I had a capacitor sized just perfectly where the capacitive current canceled out the inductive current and left me just with the resistive current, 100% power factor. Yeah, that's the concept. There I was playing with capacitance and inductance, but we can do the same playing with frequency, okay? How do we find the frequency at which that is the case for any given capacitor or inductor. Right here. The resonant frequency equals one over, and this is the quantity, right? So I really should put parentheses around that. One divided by two pi, the square root of LC. Now L, inductance, that's in Henry's. C, capacitance, in Farad's, okay? So that's how we gotta work that out. And that's how we'll find the frequency where these two are equal and cancel each other out. Below frequency, what happens? Well, let's look at if they were equal, I'm gonna draw up my uh, two frequency formula, uh, my, excuse me, my two reactance formulas, and we're gonna see what the effect is. Yeah, wrote them double, we'll do one here and one there. So basically, and this is the same thing we'll do when frequency goes up or down in a series circuit. Let's say frequency went down. From wherever it was and it went down, what's the effect? Well, frequency goes down, XL goes down. Frequency goes down, XC, this is the denominator, so the inverse relationship, XC would go up. So sure enough, when the frequency went down from resonance, the XL got smaller and the XC got larger. What did that do? That left me a net reactance. The difference between these two opposing vectors. And what does that mean for my circuit impedance? My resistance is there, and here's the net reactance, the total reactance. So I've got to do a vector sum of those two. So I take my reactance and put it here and measure a Z. And that's my Z, the vector sum of the resistance in the circuit and the net reactance, the part that wasn't canceled out. So here, below resonance, my Z got bigger than it had been. At resonance, it had been small, equal to the R. Here it got bigger. What happens over there if we take it above resonance? Frequency moves up. XL gets bigger. While the frequency is going up, my XL, I, excuse me, XC got small. Sure enough, my XC shrank, my XL got bigger. 
opposing vectors, take the little one away from the big one, and I still got a difference, my total reactance. Got to add, vectorally add that with my resistance, Pythagoras. When my frequency increased, it affected both of the reactive quantities. Remember, it doesn't affect resistance. I go out and buy resistors in, re in uh, resistance, in ohms. These things, the ohm value differs based on frequency. So above frequency, same thing it did over there, except in reverse. There's a net reactance pointing up into inductive territory. So my resistance added vectorally to my total reactance gives me an increasing Z. Do you see how it either way, below or above resonance, the Z got bigger? What does that mean my current would do? Well, Z, Z is measured in ohms. So when the ohms increase, what happens to my current? It's got to decrease. So the more, the most current will flow when Z is smaller at resonance. Either way, it crimps down on the current. We're gonna look at a couple of graphs here next that kind of explain the same thing. Similar to the vectors that show that the changes when frequency goes above or below resonance, we've got these graphs. You'll also find a copy of each one of these in your textbook. But let's take a quick look. We said that at resonant frequency, the R equaled the Z because both reactive vectors canceled each other out. So when I look at impedance, it's at its lowest at resonant frequency. And as the frequency decreases, we enter capacitive territory and the impedance starts increasing. What does that mean? With current. At resonant frequency, we were at maximum current, held back only by the resistance in the circuit. And as the frequency decreased, because the impedance increased, the current decreased. We're still in capacitive territory. If we increase frequency, Remember, 2 pi for life, that makes the inductive reactance larger, capacitive reactance lower with its inverse uh, formula. Still, the impedance increases, this time into inductive territory. Circuit becomes inductive. And that means the current will decrease as the impedance increases. So lowering frequency takes you, your circuit more capacitive and increasing your frequency makes your circuit, your series RLC circuit, more inductive. Hope these graphs and those uh, vectors help you see that as we look at a series circuit and we'll say, what happens when I change frequency? What's the effect on current or impedance back at the source? It's really this.